Good evening, everybody. It's uh, 7 p.m. It's our time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you have uh, you have connected with the St. Luke Baptist Church in Berryville, Virginia, and this is on the move to discipleship, the midweek Bible study of our church, and we're so happy to have you with us tonight. We're going to pray and ask God to bless our time, uh, and then we will uh, get into our lesson, all right? So would you please bow with me as we uh, go before the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the gift of life, and thank you, Lord, for how you have kept us and preserved our lives, and we are thankful to be in this place one more time for the study of your word. Father, we confess that without your spirit, we cannot do anything, and so tonight, Father, we need your Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, and to direct us as we engage with your word. Give us the words of life from your word tonight so that we might be able, God, to come to a place of understanding and purpose that we might achieve destiny. Father, we thank you for each person who joins us tonight, both in person and virtually. And I pray, God, that you would, by the power, person, and presence of your Holy Spirit, meet each of us individually tonight so that we might run on, God, and fulfill the call that you've placed on our lives. Thank you for each person who is with us. Father, thank you for our time. We commit our time to you tonight. We respect and we acknowledge your presence now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. And uh, once again, good evening. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we continue in our study uh, in the book of Philippians. And so we invite you to get your Bibles and turn to, <coughs> excuse me, Philippians chapter three is where we will find our place tonight. While you're turning there, let's do some preliminary stuff. Um, if this is your first time joining us, we break our lesson out into three segments, discussion, discovery, and direction. Uh, our discussion section is, um, is the section uh, in which we do an icebreaker or something to get you thinking around our theme. Uh, tonight, it'll be a recap. Uh, then the discovery section uh, is where we engage the word of God to see what the Bible has to say about our subject matter. And then there is the direction section. That's a take home piece, something for your careful contemplation, perhaps maybe an action step to put into place uh, so that you can do what the word of God has taught us in our lesson tonight. All right. And so that's how we do it every week, discussion, discovery, and direction. You will also see tonight a talk to me slide, at least one. Uh, and uh, that will be your opportunity to engage us in live and direct conversation. To those of you who are with us on Zoom, you can unmute in that space and you can talk to us related to the talk to me slide. It's usually a question, something thought provoking. Uh, and for those of you who are with us virtually, uh, you can um, uh, and when I say virtual, I mean on Facebook Live, uh, you can please use that comment section, use that comment box, write a comment when that talk to me slide comes up and we'll do our best to read your comments as they come in related to the talk to me question. Uh, we do have a syllabus for our lesson for this study. We do have a syllabus and uh, we invite you to go to our website, stlukebcva.org and click on the live, uh, Philippians Living with Joy tab. And then you wanna scroll down all the way down uh, to the last entry. That would be the entry for tonight. It will be um, Living with Joy um, chapter three. And I think it will have tonight's date 12, seven next to it. All right. And so that's how you can, that's how you can follow us. That's where you can find all of our notes for this study in Philippians. And having said that, we get right to our recap from last week. We're in Philippians chapter three, and uh, we have uh, gone through verses one through 11. 
uh, and we have embarked upon this next sec section, uh, verses 12 through 16. And so we actually got through two verses last time we were together. We got through verse 12 and first verse 13. And so in Philippians 3, Paul is giving us his spiritual biography, his spiritual bio. He talks about his past in verses 1 through 11, his present in verses 12 through 16, and his future in verses 17 through 21. Then uh, in verses 1 through 11, he shares the new values he discovered when he met Christ. And then in verses 12 through 16, he shares his spiritual vigor as he is pressing toward the finish line of his Christian race. All right. Paul uses athletics to illustrate the Christian life in verses 12 through 16. He uses the imagery of a race. He talks about pressing toward the goal, pressing toward the finish line. Uh, he says, not that I have already reached the goal, but I'm pressing toward that goal. All right. What we said out of these verses that every Christ follower must come to accept that each of us is uh, should be actively pursuing the goal of fully knowing Christ. If that's not your pursuit right now as a Christ follower, I challenge you to make that your pursuit, the goal of fully knowing Christ. All right. And then we should compare ourselves only with Christ, not with other believers. All right. And so he is, he is the line of demarcation. He is our example. He is the one to whom we should be looking um, uh, in order to know that we are achieving what Christ calls us to do and become. All right. And then in verse 13, he says, uh, you know, for, uh, but uh, forgetting those things which are behind, he said, this one thing I do, he says at, uh, at the B section of verse 13 there, as Christ followers, we must devote ourselves to running the Christian race. No athlete succeeds by doing everything. Rather, he succeeds by specializing. All right, specializing. And so with that, uh, we are ready to dive into this next section of our lesson. So you want to find your place again at Philippians chapter three. We are at verses 12 through 16 tonight. Um, we continue on with our discussion, Paul's present. All right. Uh, verses 12 through 16, not that I have already reached the goal or am already perfect, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature, <clears throat> excuse me, think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. All right. And that's uh, Philippians 3, 12 through 16. So once again, Paul's present. Here we go. As Christ followers, we'll repeat this, as Christ followers, we must devote ourselves to running the Christian race, all right? Uh, when you gave your life to Jesus, God did not save you for the purpose of simply sitting, but you've got to get off of the sidelines and get in the race. No athlete succeeds by doing everything. Rather, he succeeds by specializing. He does one thing, all right? And that's what Paul says here at verse number 13. He says, let me, let me grab my CSB here. He says here, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it right here, but one thing I do. Do you see that in your Bible? One thing I do. Facebook, if you see this in your Bible, just hit that heart button and let me know that you see that in your Bible where he says one 
thing I do. If you got King James, uh, I think it may say this one thing I do. All right, one thing I do. Thank you, I see that heart, who else? Uh, one thing, there we go. I just wanna make sure, you get, make sure you guys are tracking with us tonight. He says, one thing I do. Now get this, the one thing that Paul does in verse 13 has a two-pronged approach, all right? It's one thing, but it's got two prongs, all right? Um, like, a, uh, like a fork. A fork is one utensil, but it has, you know, three, some, some have three prongs, some have four prongs, um, you know? And so he does one thing, it's got two prongs. Here we go. The first prong is forgetting. All right, he says, forgetting what is behind. All right, that's the first prong. You got it? He says, forgetting. All right, that's your first fill in, forgetting. And then the second prong, he says, is reaching. All right, he says, reaching forward for what is ahead. One thing he does, two, two pieces to it. The first thing, he says, forgetting what is behind. The second thing, reaching for what is ahead. You got it? All right, here we go. Forgetting, this very, this, I, I like this word in the Greek. Um, forgetting is from a Greek compound. Well, it's a long word, too. I wasn't even going to try to pronounce it. Um, really, it's a long word, Greek compound word. It means to lose out of mind, to lose out of mind. By implication, it means to neglect, all right? To lose out of mind, not to go out of your mind, <laughs> but to lose out of mind, all right? Everybody got that? To lose out of mind. The picture here is that of intentionally leaving out of my mind what is behind me, all right? leaving the past in the past. Y'all got it? It is more than simply ignoring it. It is outright never including it again in one's thoughts, forgetting what is behind. This is not, uh, you know, simply a slip of the mind. No, this is very intentionally. I'm not revisiting that again. I'm I'm forward facing and fiercely focused on what is ahead, forgetting what is behind. Y'all got it? All right, here's our first talk to me tonight. And so I want you guys to jump in here in this conversation with me. Uh, why do you feel intentionally forgetting what is behind is necessary for Christ followers? Why do you feel intentionally forgetting what is behind is necessary for Christ followers? Y'all talk to me, not everybody at once. I think, um, uh, good evening, uh, Pastor. Hey, sir. Um, it's necessary because uh, for us, uh, what's behind is the old way, the old self. Okay. The, the um, and uh, that, that, you know, the part that uh, God has forgotten, that we have to try to forget that too. Ah, okay. Okay. So, right. I like it. I like it. A lot of times if we dwell on the past, uh -huh. we can't move forward. Ah, so so the answer in the building comes, or response in the building comes, uh, a lot of times if we focus on what's in the past, we cannot move forward. Is that Did I say it right? All right. If we focus on the past, we cannot move forward. Somebody else, why do you feel intentionally forgetting what is behind is necessary. Let me see. Um, Charles Spencer on Facebook Live says, you don't want to stay in your sinful ways. 
You want to become a better man. Zena Williams on Facebook Live says, so that we can grow and mature spiritually. Mm -hmm. All right. Why do you feel intentionally forgetting what is behind is necessary for the Christ follower? Or maybe I should have asked the question in this way. Do you feel it's necessary for the Christ follower to forget what is behind? Now you got two questions in front of Y'all quiet. Anybody else? Y'all scared to talk tonight? I, I kind of feel like that's uh, you need to forget. But at the same time, sometimes you have to remember. You know, and, and the reason I say that is I'm, I'm going to say you for a, a little bit of an example. A lot of times you tell us what God has brought you through. So you don't want to go back to where he brought you from. Okay. So to a certain extent, you have to remember where he brought you from. That makes sense. So, so you want to forget what's behind you, but you don't want to forget all of it because you don't want to slip back. Makes sense. Into that position. That's so. a good response. I like that. You know, that's 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 a good response, Dick Fad. And what I what I um um in reading this week, what I found was that. We know that, or rather, this the idea of forgetting what's behind doesn't necessarily mean that we totally forget what the past is, but we don't look at it the same way. We don't respond to it the same way. You know, we, we don't get the same feels that we used to get. Does that make sense? Oh, my goodness. Because what, what that can cause us to do, just as Deacon Thaddeus said, it can cause us to slip back into something. All right? So we got to be careful of that. He says, forgetting what is behind. Let's, let's move forward. Watch this. Forgetting what is behind cuts down on my distractions. Get this. When I forget what is behind, I cut down on my distractions and I strengthen my devotion. All right? To forget what is behind. Let me see. Emily Williams says, we can't live in the past. We need to move forward. I like it. All right? Forgetting what is behind lessens my distractions and strengthens my devotion. All right. And before we go to the verses, uh, I want to read something for you uh, that uh, that I found from Dr. Tony Evans. Uh, Dr. Tony Evans says there are aspects of yesterday which must be forgotten, the good, the bad and the ugly. You've got to let go of your successes, your failures and the ways others have hurt you. It's not that you don't remember the past is that you don't allow the past to be a controlling factor in your life. Wow. Wow. So we forget what is behind. We, we lessen our distractions. All right, let me see one more. Lucinda Bean on Facebook Live says, we can't move forward if we are still living in the past. Sin is always going to follow us, so we need to leave it in the past for what God has for us in the future. Thank you guys for your comments there. Look, let's look at this real quick. Watch these verses. Psalm 119, verse 15. Look at this. I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. And what that verse has to do with is distractions. I won't let anything distract me from your word. Wow. Wow. I'll meditate on your precepts. I'll think about your ways. You got it? And then watch this verse from Matthew, uh, from Matthew chapter six. No man can serve two masters since either he will hate one, <clears throat> excuse me, and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's a distracted person right there. 
trying to serve God and money, all right? You have to make an intentional decision. Watch this, to forget what is behind. Y'all got it? Distractions. Listen, there's a, uh, there's a story involving Yogi Berra. I know for some of you, Yogi Berra is going to be before your time, but he's an old, old New York Yankee. Um, uh, Yogi Berra, the well-known catcher for the New York Yankees, and Hank Aaron. All right? Yogi Berra and Hank Aaron. I don't know what's going on with my slideshow right now. There we go. Yogi Berra and Hank Aaron. Uh, Hank, who at the time uh, was the chief power hitter for the Milwaukee Braves. The teams were playing in the World Series. And as usual, Yogi was keeping up his ceaseless chatter, uh, intended to pep up his teammates on the one hand and distract the Milwaukee batters on the other hand. As Aaron came to the plate, Yogi tried to distract him by saying, Henry, you're holding the bat wrong. You're supposed to hold it so you can read the trademark. Aaron didn't say anything. But when the next pitch came, he hit it into the left field bleachers. After rounding the bases and tagging up at home plate, Aaron looked at Yogi Berra and said, I didn't come up here to read. <laughs> got it you got to cut down those distractions you got to cut down on those distractions so i and so on the first prong on the first prong he says forgetting what is behind all right remember we said there's one he said this one thing i do but it has two pieces to it. It has two parts. It is two prong. The first prong, he says, forgetting what is behind. The second prong, he says, reaching forward for what is ahead. Reaching. Paul says this, uh, again, we're at verse 13. He says, and reaching for what is ahead. Another interesting word here, another interesting Greek word. Uh, not quite as long as the first one, but I still wasn't going to try to pronounce this one either. Reaching is from a Greek word, which means, I like this, to stretch oneself or to stretch forward. All right. I want you to get this mental picture in your mind, to stretch oneself or to stretch forward. I want you to think about um, runners who are running a race, particularly um, uh, a sprint, all right, running a sprint. And as they close in on the finish line, get this picture, get this mental image, you see one runner start to lean forward, all right? That's, that literally is a stretch, all right? And the purpose is to hit the finish line before his, y'all got it? All right, I want you to get that picture in your mind. He says, reaching forward to what is ahead. Again, the imagery is that of a runner reaching toward the finish line, all right? That, that probably wasn't, it's probably not the best image, but you know, it was one I found, I thought it was neat. All right, just so you get the idea, because he, he is, he's doing the stretch there, all right? In other words, as Christ followers, we should be, get this, we should be fiercely focused on our future. Remember what he says, forgetting what is behind. Now, you got to think about, you got to go back to, what he recounts in verses 1 through 11. Remember, he said, I count all things as loss for the excellency of knowing Christ. And then he go, remember, he goes through that resume. He says, man, 
I'm, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews, born, uh, you know, born into the Hebrew family. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I was circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, he says, um, I'm a Pharisee. Concerning the law, I'm blameless. Uh, concerning um, zeal, persecuting the church. He runs down all of this stuff that, that, you know, in his life before Christ would have been so important to him. And he says, none of those accolades compare to knowing Christ. Are we together? And so we have to be able, we have to find ourselves as Christ followers in similar circumstance as Paul. We cannot rest on the laurels of our past. We've got to be fiercely focused on where God is leading us. He says, reaching for what is ahead. It has everything to do with direction. Y'all got it? There's a direction in which we need to be moving, all right? Reaching forward for what is ahead means that we break the power of the past by living for the future. You got it? Living for the future, all right? We break the power of the past by living for the future. Let's look at uh, Luke chapter nine. Look, but Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Do you see that? No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. It's very interesting, um, it's really interesting um, to watch. I mean, of course, I know they have, you know, all this mechanized equipment now, um, but I don't know if, if any of you have ever seen a farmer plow with a horse driven plow. That's a really, that's a really interesting thing um, because one, you have to guide the horse in a, in a straight line. You got to work the plow at the same time while you're trying to guide the horse, you know, and then you got to make sure that the line is straight that you putting in the ground. It's really an interesting process. And in order to do that successfully, the farmer can't place his attention on what's behind him. He's got to stay focused on what's happening ahead of him. Otherwise, looking back will cause him to start to mess up his road. I mean, we are in the Shenandoah Valley. Somebody ought to know something about that. Help me somebody. All right. And so listen, Jesus says, no one who puts his hand to the plow. Get this. I want you to, and I, I raised that image for purpose. I want you to hear what Jesus says. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back mm -hmm. is fit for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, get this. Your role doesn't necessarily, your role doesn't have to be perfect, but it need to be straight. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. And then look here. Luke. 1732. Now I didn't do a slide. I didn't do a talk to me slide for this one, but listen to what this verse says. This verse says, remember Lot's wife. All right. Now this is, this is an unofficial talk to me. So y'all jump in here. 
Talk to me about Lot's wife. All right, that's the end of the story. She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Very good. What else? Go ahead, Mr. Pearl. Um, she didn't obey orders. <laughs> Yeah, how about because that? Because they were told when they they were when they were ordered to leave um, Sodom, um, and they were told not to look back. Yeah, the angel told them not to look back. And yeah, yeah. What else? Anything else about Lot's wife? Y'all know why she looked back? You're muted. There you go. There we go. All right, because watch this. She looked back because she didn't want to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. She was in love with what was going on mm -hmm. in Sodom and Gomorrah. And watch this. She would have experienced freedom in God mm -hmm. had she chosen not to look back. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. How many of us are robbing ourselves of freedom in Christ because we choose, watch this, to look back on our past and try to relive, Lord have mercy, mm -hmm. things, watch this, that we've already outrun. Anybody ever seen The Lion King? You know, the Disney movie? My favorite place. One of, one of my favorite scenes in that movie is when, um, is when, uh, what's the, what's the, the cub? Yeah, well, yeah, the monkey, Rafiki. But Simba, thank Simba. you. Simba. I was getting ready to call him Mufasa. That was the daddy, he was dead. Uh, uh, but one of my favorite scenes in that movie is when, Rafiki finally runs into a more mature Simba. And he tells Simba, you've got to go home. And Simba says, I can't go back because of what happened back then. And Rafiki Hit him on the head with that stick. Yes. Pow! He wrapped him right on top of the head. And uh, and and uh, and uh, Simba said to him, well, what did you do that for? And then he swung the stick again. And this time he ducked. And the monkey said, Rafiki said, it's in the past. Doesn't matter. It's in the past. And some of us, listen, I need to talk to some of us tonight about what God has called us to do, what he has created us to become. And some of us cannot, watch this, do what he's called us to do and become what he has created us to become because we are stuck in the past. You're not going to get it back. Just touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you're not going to get it back. You're not going to get it back. I tell when I talk about when I talk about this, often I share this story about uh, about uh, my class. When, when I graduated high school, we had a class shirt. We had a class T-shirt. And on the class T-shirt, it had everybody's names on. It. All right. My name was on the back. It was about the third row, about the 15 name down. Um, Ain't it credible that you were some of the stuff you just remember? Um, um, but, but watch this. In 1985, when I graduated high school, I could still wear that shirt. It fit for 1985. But I tried to put it on one time in 1999. <laughs> and it just, it just wasn't working. It Listen, the shirt didn't fit. Didn't matter what kind of nostalgia it brought to me. I couldn't wear it. It was of no use to me because it didn't fit. 
I'm trying to tell somebody tonight that you're trying to live your life, watch this, wearing a shirt that don't fit. Paul says, forgetting what is behind. He said, I can't wear that shirt no more. I, he says, listen, I, listen, it's nostalgic for me to think about the fact that I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews, that I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. All of that stuff is good. Hallelujah. Celebrate good times. Come on. But it doesn't fit any longer in light of what Christ has called me to. Are y'all getting this tonight? Somebody on Facebook Live, just type this in the comments for me tonight. The shirt don't fit. Right, I know, bad grammar, but good theology. The shirt don't fit. <laughs> Are y'all getting this tonight? It doesn't fit, man. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. What is that verse uh, in, in, uh, in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17? What does that say? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man, behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Your shirt doesn't fit. Are y'all getting the only thing that shirt is good for now is a dust rag. Help me. <laughs> That's it. A dust rag. I got the yearbook. I'll go look at the pictures, but the shirt don't fit. <laughs> All right. Let me get off of that right there. Are y'all getting this tonight? He says, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. Now get this, do not try to run this Christian race by looking backward. You will stumble, you will fall, and you will impede the progress of others who are running the race. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You can't run this Christian race looking back. You know, I'm a, okay, I'm gonna give you one more um, one more illustration. I'm getting off of this. Um, in your car, all right? I think everybody in here tonight drives. All right, in your car, you have a little mirror that's called the rear view mirror, right? It is not the intention of the car manufacturer that when you drive, you spend all of your time looking in the rear view mirror. The rear view mirror is there to remind you of where you came from. The key to good driving is to focus on the larger window in the front called the windshield because that allows you to see where you're going. Are we together? And as, watch this, as Christ followers, you got to shut down the rear view mirror and you got to use the windshield now because there's a place that Christ wants to take you you got to be looking ahead in order to see it. Are you with me? All right. That was the last one. We're going to move on. So we got to cut down on distractions. We're almost at the end. We got to strengthen our devotion. We got to focus on our direction. And then we get to verse 14. All right. So here we go. It's been pretty segmented so far. He says, well, let me read 13 right into 14. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I press, King James Version, 
or this CSB says, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. That's verse 14. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. We're going to pull the train into the station here at this part of verse 14, but we'll pick up more at verse 14 the next time we meet together. The Greek word used for press means to pursue, to ensue, or to follow after. Get it? To pursue, to ensue, to follow after. The, the, the Greeks use this word uh, to describe a hunter eagerly pursuing his prey. I'm tracking it down. I'm chasing after my future. My God. Y'all getting this? You, you, you getting this picture in your mind? Look, what every Christ follower needs is this word right here, determination. 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 When I was a little boy, um, well, I can't say when I was a little boy, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe early 20s or so, uh, my mentor used to use a word um, that that is, um, you know, really em emblazoned, if that if there is such a word in my memory, and that word is stick to itiveness. You ever heard that stick to itiveness? How about this bulldog tenacity? <laughs> You know, uh, um, certain breed of bulldog, when they bite down on you, they get what's called lockjaw. Mm -hmm. All right. And when that happens, it takes a measurable amount of pressure for that jaw to release. Mm -hmm. All right. I need, I need you to get this. In my pursuit, of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus, I need to get spiritual lockjaw. Mm -hmm. I need to hold on to that. I need to pursue that with bulldog tenacity. No matter what tries to shake me, I won't let go. Remember Jacob when when he had that episode he was uh get, he sent his family uh across the the river of Jabbok and he was preparing to face his brother and uh before his meeting with his brother the bible says that late at night uh early in the morning the angel of the lord showed up and wrestled with him And as it got closer to daylight, the angel said, let me go because daylight is coming. And, ja uh, and Jacob said, nope, I won't let go until you bless me. That's the kind of tenacity that we have to have in pursuing the, watch this, pressing for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in, I won't let go until I get it. Does that make sense tonight? Hey, Facebook, somebody just type in the comments there, I won't let go. <clears throat> you need determination. I won't, I won't let go. Determination is what motivates me despite the circumstances that I encounter along the way. You know challenges are going to come, but you're still not going to let anything dissuade you 
from getting to where God has called you. Come on, somebody. Look, determination says I will, I can, I shall, I must. Mm. I will, I can, I shall, I must. I won't let go. Determination, my God. Look, Romans 12, 11 says this. Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Determination. First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Don't you know that the runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way to win the prize. Now, everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. They do it to receive a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. So I do not run like one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control so that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Determination. Y'all getting it? Look, 2 Timothy 4.7. This is what Paul says at the end of his life. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Determination. 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 Come hell or high water. I'm going to finish with this little story that I like to tell about this traveling salesman. Um, who who goes uh, who goes to this to this farmhouse? He winds up at this farmhouse, um, and uh, um, it's getting late in the evening. And so the the farmer invites the salesman to stay the night. You know, he gives him dinner, and and he says, "Listen, I got a room upstairs. You can you can stay upstairs in my attic." Uh, and, and you'll be fine until the morning. Well, uh, the traveling salesman says, thank you, sir. Uh, I will accept your offer. He goes and he goes up in that attic and um, stays over the night. Well, apparently uh, it rained really hard overnight. And so when the traveling salesman wakes up, he looks out the window and lo and behold, the whole area is flooded. I mean, flooded bad. I mean, flooded bad and the water is up high. So he can't do anything. He's, you know, he's kind of trapped up in that attic. Um, and he notices uh, all of these things, you know, floating in the water. He sees a chicken coop go by, you know, he sees a tree limb uh, floats by. Uh, but something caught his attention. There was this straw hat. It was unusual. This straw hat would float downstream, but then it would come back upstream. <laughs> and then it would float back downstream. Then it would come back upstream. And this was an odd sight for the traveling salesman. In all of his days, he'd never seen anything like this before. And so he calls down to the farmer and says, man, can you come look at this? The farmer makes his way up into the attic and, and uh, the salesman said to him, look at that straw hat. I've done, I've seen all of these things flow. I saw the chicken coop go by. I saw these tree branches go by, but this straw hat, it goes downstream but then it comes back upstream. Then it goes downstream. Then it comes back upstream. I, I've never said, this is the oddest thing I've ever seen in my life. What in the world is going on? The farmer said, oh, don't worry about that. That's grandpa. He said he was going to cut the grass come hell or high water. <laughs> Determination. 
Determination. Determination. He says, forgetting what is behind, reaching forward to what is ahead. I press. We're going to pick that up next week. All right. God bless you guys tonight for uh, for our direction tonight. Um, if you've not read uh, Philippians chapter three, I want to encourage you to read it. If you have read it, I want to encourage you to read it again. And as you read it, take some time for personal reflection. He says, forgetting what is behind, reaching for what is ahead. I press determination. What is your determination? All right. Uh, our biblical affirmations tonight, of course, Ephesians chapter two and verse 10, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And our affirmation with this verse is this, that I am created with a purpose for a purpose on purpose. And then our second affirmation comes from Luke 17, 21, which says the kingdom of God is within me. Amen. Amen. And I want to encourage you tonight um, with this verse. We'll look at it in a few weeks, but it comes right out of the book of Philippians that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Grace and peace is our benediction to you tonight. Thank you for joining us uh, for On the Move to Discipleship. I look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday as we continue our discussion in Philippians chapter three. God's grace be upon you. God bless you. Y'all have a good night. Amen.